Let's take a look at the basics of the drum set or the drum kit, as it's also called. You have the cymbals and you have the drums. Those are the two main parts of the drum kit. Let's talk about the drums. Within this drum kit, there's five drums. You have the kick drum, which is the large drum that you play with your foot. You have the snare drum, which is the centerpiece of the drum kit. And then in this case, I have three toms, two rack toms and one floor tom. Let's talk about the kick drum. The kick drum is the epicenter of the drum kit. It is the, the heartbeat. It's the drum that makes your car shake when you turn it up because it's got a lot of bass, a lot of low frequencies. The kick drum sounds like this. Lots of low frequencies. It's punchy. It really helps center the groove. When you're playing like a rock beat, it typically is beats one and three. Those are the main areas where the kick is in the groove. The bass drum has a front head, also called a batter head, and then it has the back head. This is all from drummer's perspective. The back head is called the resonant head. This resonant head has a hole in the middle and as you can see, the hole in the head is actually to get a microphone inside. The bass drum has lugs on the shell. This shell is made of wood. The lugs are on the shell. The tension rods hold the claws and the hoop on. There's a hoop that holds the head on the shell. And the tension rods tighten to raise and lower the pitch of the drum head. This happens both on the batter side and on the resonant side. Let's talk about the snare drum. The snare drum also is one of the epicenters or the heartbeats of the drum kit. The snare drum will be the drum that is probably heard the most on recordings and when playing live. It is also called the backbeat of the drum set. The snare drum also has lugs on it. It also has tension rods and it has a hoop. The tension rods tighten down with the drum key to raise and lower the pitch of the head. You have the, the batter head, which is the head that you strike the stick with, and you have the resonant head. Now what makes the snare drum unique is the snare wires that go across the bottom of the head. This is what gives the snare drum its unique tone. It also has a throw off. The throw off allows the snares to be removed from the bottom head like this. So now the snares are loose and not touching the bottom head. The kick and the snare together sound like this. So that's the snare drum. You also have toms. Toms are drums that are used for accenting and doing fills. You can also use a tom as a primary rhythmic part in a song, but most of the time toms are used to fill at the end of phrases. The tom also has a lug, a tension rod, a hoop, a batter head, and a resonant head. The tom sounds like this. And there are many different sizes of toms. These toms happen to be eight inches around, 10 inches around, and 14 inches around. This is the basic 
drum part of a drum kit. Now you also have cymbals, and this is the second part of the drum kit. With this drum set, I have essentially four cymbals that I'm using. The first and the primary is the hi-hat. The hi-hat is comprised of two cymbals that are being used together with a pedal. And the pedal can raise and lower the top cymbal. It creates the opportunity for the tone of the hi-hat to change as the pedal moves. So the hi-hat can be used to keep time by closing it and opening it. You can play the hi-hat to be subdivisions in a groove. A lot of times the hi-hat is what glues or keeps together the kick and the snare drum part. For example, this is a hi-hat pattern that would go with the snare and kick groove. This would be the hi-hat part. You can hear how the hi-hat is playing subdivisions of the main beats that the kick and the snare are playing. As the hi-hat moves, the foot controlling the hi-hat can also move. It can open and close and it can change the tone of the cymbal. So the hi-hat is a lot of times the glue for the kick and the snare drum. Now another symbol that can also glue the kick and the snare together is the ride symbol. They call it a ride because you can ride it. The ride symbol is typically the largest symbol a part of the drum set. This ride symbol happens to be 22 inches around. It has a deeper, darker sound and it can be uh, open. It can ring out like that. It can also be focused if you play it on the bell. When you use both of these sections of the ride together, you can create an accented pattern. So the ride symbol offers an opportunity for you to change up the tone from the hi-hat to something different. A lot of times you would use the ride cymbal in a chorus of a song or uh, a bridge. The next is the crash cymbals um, or, or effect cymbals or splash cymbals. I don't have any of those on the kit today, but the crash cymbals, these two cymbals, offer a large accent to the kit. The crash cymbals can vary in sizes from 14 inches now they're making them as big as 26 inches. Huge cymbals if, if you wanted to go for that big, loud, open sound. This cymbal is 21 inches and this cymbal is 18 inches. This is what the crash cymbals sound like. A higher pitched one and a lower pitched one. A lot of times you play the crash cymbal with the kick drum. Here's what it sounds like. These are the basic components that make up a drum set.